Hey everybody, so we're here on our family farm with my dad. Hey dad, Hello. how's it going? We just offloaded this whole trailer full. It was that big pile right there. I was telling dad it looks like that pile of dinosaur dung from Jurassic Park. That was, that was a favorite movie growing up. We've probably seen it, what, 15, 20 times? Yeah, probably a bunch. A lot. So, that's the dinosaur stuff. Anyway, so we got good wood mulch here. Arborist wood chips that are probably about six months to a year old. They've got uh, mostly leaves, needles, twigs, branches, and then some hardwood in there. So, Dad's gonna use his Kubota to move it from here all the way down there to the garden, which we'll show you in a bit. This is my... This is my handheld Kubota right here. This is orange. <laughs> no, that's mine. What are, you, what are you talking about? These things that's are expensive. Yours. That's right. I'm going to switch over to the one that I <laughs> yeah. push a pedal in. You have a real Kubota. This is mine. Uh, first Kubota here. But, uh, yeah, so can do that. And got a little more in the back there. It got real heavy because it rained the day before I loaded this and last night. So you can see it's loaded down real heavy. So we'll see if we can get out of that slipperiness right there. That's pretty good stuff. I was telling somebody recently that really brown compost is generally more high in nutrients than, than uh, black compost. You want a little combination. This is what shows you I need a dump truck a trailer eventually. But yep. Dad, you want to show us the garden in a little bit after we get this done? Yeah. Show you, show us what you got going on. I know out here things just grow like crazy, so we've been trying to figure out a solution to the whole problem with too many weeds popping up. So. We've, in the past, we've tried doing super, super thick mulch and uh, kind of more of the back to eating type method. And that works, doesn't it, for a little bit, but then some stuff comes up. Yeah. So, I think right now we're, we're gearing more towards a, um, I'm gonna stand right here, more towards like a solarization method. So you got some thick plastic and We'll show you guys what dad's got going on. Whew. Let me set this down. Yeah, we're dealing with the mud today for sure. Look at that. We've already got fun guy having a fun time here. Right in there, all those guys. Even since, since like just last night, they're spreading. That's cool. Old people can still do stuff. <laughs> That's true. A lot of stuff. Not to mention all the good advice you can have too. Man, oh man. This, you know, this covering this grass up on the edge. Yeah. Border thing. Mm-hmm. And you were talking to me about that paper that we've got down there. Yeah, the fabric. So I guess we'll be okay to put on here. Yep. So, tell me what you got going on. Uh, well, I'm trying to be, trying to be like my son. <laughs> uh, yeah, I wanted to turn this area into a really nice family garden. And um, it's got good drainage, south is that way, so it's got southern mm -hmm. facing, so it's got good characteristics that way. It's pretty well flat, although it has a, it tails off over the hill. And um, I really like it's a pretty view. Mm -hmm. So I like to come up here in my barn and in the garden and just yeah. refresh my, my heart mm -hmm. uh, physically and just emotionally. So anyway, I want to control this and I got this black rubber plastic stuff here. It's rubbery mm -hmm. stuff, I guess, that it was given to me. Um, it's over this way. I'll show you. Somebody gave me this, a good friend of mine, and um, Jeff. 
got it. It's really from a Haas roofing material, this is. Yeah. And um, there's just some odds and ends pieces, but it's from a hospital that That's good they stuff. were re-roofing and threw that away. Well, it's killing weeds. You can see what it's been doing. I've had it yeah. on there a couple of weeks. That's good stuff. So it's it's at least smothering those. Yeah. So my, my goal, or what I think, if garden guy has advised me correctly and I've understood, <laughs> is I'll let this kill this out, but eventually I'll peel this off. Mm -hmm. I'll peel it back and then I'll put several inches of uh, wood chips and mulch on there to to keep the weeds yeah. from sprouting back up. Yep. And so then plant into that. And on the fabric over there, which it looks the same, but this is different. This is a fabric here. This is a. <clears throat> this it's is, like a. This is a thin, papery. Geotextile, kind of, like like a woven. Yeah. It's not actually woven. Actually, it's it's just uh, netting. But you can see what happens with. Well, I'm covering it up because I'm going to just cut through it. Yeah. So I'll remove this rubber stuff eventually. Wait a this second, stay gone. still. There's Thank a you. horse fly. So th this rubber stuff, I'll get out of here. It's too thick. Yeah. But as I get mulch to replace it. Yeah. So it's just a temporary way of killing weeds and controlling them. This stuff I'm going to leave down, but I'll cut, put the mulch right on top of it and, uh, and then cut through it when I want to plant something. Mm -hmm. So it'll continue to protect that way. I don't have to pull it up. But just on its own, Come over this way, Bench. I'll show you. Yeah. The problem I'm having is it. You see this? This is the the papery fabric. Mm -hmm. But the plants underneath are, are pushing it up, so that it yeah. it really pulls the edges out and exposes. So you see what's growing oh, yeah. in there? Yeah. This is my bean that I salvaged, but and the rabbits got a few of my birds. But anyway, this stuff's coming up. This dock. Or whatever. Yeah, this dock. So it's pushing up and there's some nut wheat, nut grass right there that's pushing. So that's why I need to put mulch on top of it or those little pins that you yeah, staple staples. that you put down. Yep. That would hold it too. But anyway, I've got to, yeah, it's hard to, to let, I cut it so that my beans would come through. My idea was cut this in here, plant my beans, then my beans would come through. Yeah. And a few did, but birds and other things have nipped off some of them. But now the dock is pushing up. So I'm just going to so cover So what's over the here? Mulch. Tell me what. This is just. Oh, I just planted those straight into, into the, the mulch. Into the mulch. I was doing an experiment. It's working so, so far, far. I like this. Um, I did cut a little trench in there with my sh with my hoe. Yeah. And then I put some uh, worm Pump. castings in there that I have. Nice. And boy, I have the best worm castings. Maybe we'll show everybody the worm castings yeah. be in here in a minute. That'd oh, be good. That's the gold of gold. It right really there. is, man. And over there, hey, I have that. Um, potatoes. Yeah. And Coming right through there. I just put them on the ground, like you said, straight on the ground, and then I covered them with uh, this, with the Deep chips. Pulse. Yeah. And more. so they're they're just growing right up through that. And I've continued as they grew taller. I added more chips. Okay. On yeah. The edges of the way they'll expand like out. That. Those are fairly decomposed. I remember that. Wait, that old truck is so loud. Yeah. Let's pause the truck. All right. The truck's passed. Now. Yeah. Good. So that happens. We live in an area where they have logging trucks. So anyway. Let's walk around here so this is not in the way. What I was going to do, what I did over here is you told me just put them on the ground yep. and then cover them with the chips. So we had a load of chips. And that's what I did about this much. I just covered them about that deep. Yeah. Well, they started growing through. So I've just continued every few days or so to add a little more chips to the sides of it. And they keep growing. Mm -hmm. and they're going up. And I guess, like, here's one that's putting on flowers. So it's trying to. Yep. become mature. You, can, you can snip that off actually. That? Yeah. I'm gonna do it. You don't really want them to go to flower because you don't want them to put that energy into the oh, into the flower. Good. I didn't know that. That helped me. You snip oh, that. Good. Because I thought it was pretty quick that they were. Yeah they're all trying to. I'll, I'll get them all off. So yep. we did that and then I have also in here some uh, onions. onions that I just planted straight into into the wood chips as well. I did put a little bit of um, worm, castings. worm castings down for them. That is I, nice. I didn't touch. put the potatoes. I just put the potatoes straight on the ground. But I had good rich soil here anyway. Yeah, yeah. I'm hoping they'll, they'll find those nutrients down there. Yeah. And spread onions out. Onions are coming up there and I've got another row right through here. Mm -hmm. onions. That's just extra chips down there that I'm using to add on here <coughs> over time. Cool. And, then I'll and they'll, they'll keep on composting anyway yeah. too. I like a neat garden. Mm -hmm. But you, you have to have a, a corner somewhere that's not pristine. I mean, it's like, like I've got a pile of stuff here. I'd like it to be all nice and smooth and 
and the, and the edge is all done and I'll get closer to that with time because I like it. It's pretty. I like that. But sometimes you have to have a little messy corner where you got composting and <laughs> worms and yeah. tools and things going on. And so it's like your your uh, kitchen corner. Kitchen can be kind of neat, but you're, that's where all the work happens too. Yeah, yeah. It's an act. It's a working place. Yeah. Um, but I'm enjoying making it. Some of it cool. a looking place. Mm -hmm. And where you're standing is you can maybe see better from this angle. It, that this weedy. area is weedy. This dock. It's my enemy around yeah, I here. I know it's food, actually. You can eat dock. Yeah. Uh, when it's younger leaves, boil it, and then pour off the water, and then boil it again, you can eat it. Otherwise, yeah. it's kind of a diuretic. Mm -hmm. So you can eat dock, and I've had some. It's good mm -hmm. food. But it pushes through the compost. It pushes through it everything. Does. It's yep. powerful. Yep. So I just keep pulling it and cutting it, and I don't know what else to do with that stuff. If you have an idea, yeah, let us I'm, know. I'm open to about what to do with dock to control it. So I'm with this area because it, this area drops off. Mm -hmm. And um, it's not flat like like the rest of it. So what I'm thinking is I've got some uh, cinder blocks, some square blocks that I that I got from a friend uh, whose house burned or had a burnt house, and they didn't want the blocks. Mm -hmm. The blocks are not real stable; they're more brittle mm -hmm. once they've been around a fire. So I'm gonna take those and build a raised bed for my strawberries and asparagus. Nice. And you were telling me, and, and I'll make it level that way. Hubble culture in the bottom, and then. Uh, wood chips and then my worm castings on top yeah. and you were telling me it's a good idea to leave the bottom open since I'm going to put asparagus in there yes so because those roots go so deep I do I'm glad you told me that because I was planning to put some of the rubber stuff down yeah on the bottom. no and uh, but that deep it's gonna block all mm -hmm. that yeah if you're doing it that deep so since it's gonna be that deep two and a half three feet deep it the just that amount of material is tough to push through even for dock so that should be fine to to do the the, th the thick area without having the fabric underneath because i do like to keep raised beds clear the bottom being no fabric if possible because then you have all that translation of, of uh, worms and bacteria fungi and all the minerals that tend to be in, in native soils and then um it's just a happier ecosystem if you're not trying to but if you put the fabric down <clears throat> or even plastic underneath your raised bed that just creates a closed system where you only have that much let's say you have two feet to work with of, of material but if you if you don't have that then you think about how much soil is beneath that you have all the, the water reserves that, that can come up through the soil um, you'll notice you'll, you'll eventually notice actually like clay begin to show show up or clay or more mineral material show up in your original let's say you put compost in and soil in your raised beds you'll get material you didn't even put there because the worms and other other microorganisms are m mixing it back and forth so it's pretty cool that is cool so keep it open if you can but if you're dealing with tough weeds sometimes you have to for maybe a year um but i think optimum is what dad's doing over here where you're you're killing it off you can just you know you're not growing anything over here but you can you can knock it out and you can try to do some squash that's what i like to do squash are you doing the squash over here i'm gonna have squash those are pumpkins uh i've got a few of your pumpkins in, by that stick over there but just because i had yep. an opening yeah so if you have little openings or you can cut little holes then you can have squash that'll spread out it takes a lot of space anyway while you're trying to kill everything off yep. cool. so i had a question the other day that i asked benjamin about tomatoes that's what I'm asking mm -hmm. so everybody else can hear. Go over here. Um, I'm, they're doing great. They started off, they're doing great. So, but I thought, I think you're supposed to pull off the suckers. So I wasn't sure do I keep pulling off the suckers, but also suckers can sprout. Mm -hmm. if you put them in the ground and, and moisture, then they, or water maybe it is, they, they'll put out roots and then grow a tomato plant. Yeah. So I wasn't sure whether I would take them off if you pinched, if you pinched them off just to make big tomatoes, or if you pinched them off, because it was detrimental and it kept the tomatoes small. So tell me about tomatoes. What's best to do? When do I pinch? Do I pinch? Do pinch or not to pinch? That is the question. <laughs> that uh, is the question. Yeah. You rolling? Okay, so on tomatoes, now I'm not, I don't claim to be a complete amazing expert on tomatoes, but I do know the principle of why we sometimes want to 
to basically prune a tomato. Now, the way the tomato grows, there's two main types of tomatoes. There's indeterminates and determinants. Indeterminates, they just keep growing and growing and growing. And then they produce as they grow. Determinants have been bred in a certain way to where they grow and grow and then they produce a whole bunch of, of fruit and then they're done. So I personally like indeterminates the best because they they just keep producing. Uh, but determinants can be nice for like small container gardens because they're not going to overwhelm your space. So these are right here are indeterminates, so they're going to keep going. And so whenever I prune these, you can see see they're already getting a little fruit on the side here. And then what you get is your main stem coming up here, and then you get what's called um, suckers. A sucker is a, um, a little shoot that comes from what's called a node. A node is in between your branch, or your, your leaf that comes out is actually one leaf, and the, the main stem. So to see that is actually a sucker that has become a branch. So this is okay. For, for like a farm here where we're just doing, you know, we're not like super specific about it. I would let these two main branches come on and then this guy right here see this i'll try to show him see this right here that's a sucker that i would say it would be good to take off so all you do is you can just pinch with your hand just take it off and then throw it somewhere that is not going to be around here because you don't want that dead material to be cl close to your living plants. It is could. it okay to put that back in the compost? I would just put it over there, yeah, in the compost. We All can right. put it in a pile right now. I feed it to my worms. There you go. They like it. So, um, the reason for it is that you want to focus the growth potential of your plant on uh, on the branches that are going to produce fruit. Uh, fruit. And because these things, they they're actually happy in more of a tropical environment where they would they would continue growing for months and months if they had the the possibility but out here you know we we'll, we have like a two month three month growing season so we're trying to focus their production on the bigger fruit and not try to make fruit months and months down the road so those little suckers would eventually produce probably but we're trying to focus the production towards the main some main stems um, that way we don't have any wasted potential. So that's the goal of, of doing that. And I, to give you some specifics on how much to do, for me, if I'm growing like a cage like this, you got, let's see, one, two, you have three plants here. I like to, I like to just keep the plant to two main stems coming up and then um, about halfway up, two or three feet. Personally, I don't keep on doing the suckers like up uh, to me have already cut out all that wasted potential wasted potential potential wasted potential i've cut out all, all that those suckers that were un not needed and then from then on they're going to continue producing suckers but the majority of the plant is already geared towards one or two maybe three main stems more like one or two does that make sense mm -hmm. yeah it's cool. good yep so just keep on doing that and uh See the little, little flowers will come out and you can see them, just don't pull them off. Sometimes I will pull flowers off if they try to produce them real soon after growing. I don't want to have flowers until they're like this size or maybe a little bigger. So like just to quickly do show you how fast it is, here's one. And there's other types of grow, growing methods. See there's one coming here, one here. You can take this out or you can leave this one, it's up to you. Um, but there's there's other methods where they are very specific about how much they pluck the suckers off. And th some of that's even, you know, each, each variety they've found out the specific optimum amount to cut off. And so, but gen for generally for like homesteaders and homeowners and stuff like that, that hopefully gives them a good idea. Good. Well, good. I need to talk to you about garlic. Okay. Can I ask you a few questions about my garlic? Yeah.